this video will show the oil on canvas, a two by three foot canvas of the subject of the cow palace developed from early stages on through to end product. So for those that aren't familiar, the cow palace is a San Francisco icon, not as glorious and romantic as the Golden Gate Bridge or cable cars or even Alcatraz, but it has a long history and it's part of my boyhood of housing rodeos and circuses as well as uh, rock concerts. I saw the Who destroy their amplifiers at the Cow Palace. Uh, it is, in a sense, extraordinarily ordinary in regard to uh, architectural beauty. In fact, it really verges on being ugly, somewhat ugly. But so much of my work has been based on the ordinary and the everyday, and at least myself, I find a kind of quiet beauty in the ordinary. So let's take a look at the very beginning of this painting, which is the finished pencil sketch. And I happen to choose uh, a number two yellow school pencil and or an HB drafting pencil for my pencil sketches uh, because it's dark enough to see and it is hard enough where it doesn't smear very much and still still it is erasable and what we have in this next image is a minimal underpainting I start all of my paintings in any medium as well as most all my drawings by placing the strongest darks first the actual black is in 100% gray, which I've done here, but I also did some very mild underpainting. By the way, all the underpainting is done in oil, though the sky and the parking lot uh, is very thin washes of uh, oil painting just to help distinguish sky from building from parking lot. In the next image I'm showing you what I did to prepare for my first move in terms of application of paint that will be part of the final product of the painting is I'm going to pursue the sky and what I'm showing you here is my palette where I have laid out four different uh, colors which the sky is going to be composed of and here in the next image what I'm showing you is the early stage of applying those four different colors and then what we have in this uh, image is I've now taken those kind of crude, rough layouts of the colors and smoothed and feathered the edges of that to create the soft clouds. And in this image here, what I'm showing you is that the, the thickness, or maybe better said, the thinness of the paint in the sky allowed some of the underdrawing of the various antennas to show through uh, and I certainly wasn't going to paint around the antennas. In fact, it would be impossible with all that feathering to paint around something that thin. But, you know, in this case, fortunately, the, the underlying drawings showed through enough where I could use those in the development of the antenna later on. What we have here is an early stage of the painting where I have completed the sky. Because so much white paint was used in the creation of the sky, and white paint dries more slowly than any other color, is I had to move on to the parking lot to find a dry area of the canvas that I could... Um, work on without fear of sm smearing wet paint. Normally what I do is I start from backwards, from background forwards, but in this case is I moved all the way up front just to make sure that I wasn't sitting around waiting for paint to dry. To me, it's very important not to allow yourself, unless it's absolutely necessary, to let wet paint dry because it would lengthen the the length of time it takes to complete a painting uh, in, a in a ridiculous manner if you just kept waiting for various things to dry. 
What you're seeing in this image also is uh, in the blue of the sky, uh, that there is a shift which is absolutely natural from the, the blue of the sky being darker uh, up higher, darker and more pure up higher, and then as it moves down towards the horizon, it becomes lighter in value and less pure. That shift helps give the sense of the third dimension to the sky, and in the application of the grays, it's most easily seen with the grays in the parking lot, is I also created a shift, in this case, that starts out a little lighter and as the parking lot recedes back to the building, becomes darker. Again, that helps enhance the sense of the third dimension. Also, what has happened in relation to the, the principle of unity, a major part of basic design, is that all three sub-principles of unity are in play. Unity is what holds an image together. So the sub-principles that uh, are easy to see are the, um, the repetition and variation of diagonals receding back to the center of the painting. There's a diagonal pattern in the cloud, and clearly you can see with the perspective on the various lines in the parking lot. The, the, the diagonal patter, pattern receding to the center of the image. The other element that's happening, the other sub-principle of uh, unity is rhythm. And though there's not a, a visual uh, flow of direction, almost like a dance pattern, there is a real clear indication from those diagonals moving to the center of the image that it draws the viewer's eye to the center of the image, which of course is a good place to draw the viewer's eye. What we're seeing here is a close-up of some of the parking lot revealing the spattering that I did with the toothbrush to give some sense of texture to the asphalt. And you can see that spatter is clearly visible in the very foreground and fades away as things move back spatially. You can also see that I blended numerous other elements of color into the blacktop surface just to give it more character uh, and interest. And here what we're seeing is essentially um, the sky and the parking lot again, but now with the spatter incorporated into the parking lot. In this image, I'm now pursuing the basic uh, light colors that are in the building of the cow palace. And in this image, I'm just moving further along and have begun to pursue some of the darks. And here we have finally um, the, the light post address, which was the last uh, step before I got to this place, which is the completed painting. This is uh, the finished product of the two by three foot oil on canvas titled Cow Palace. What we're looking at here is a detail showing some of the architecture, the entryway to the Cow Palace, as well as the automobiles. This is a detail of the car itself. And to give you a sense, you can see in this detail, uh, the strong texture of the canvas. That's because from the, the left end of the car to the right end of the car, we're dealing with two and a half inches, which is a pretty small little hunk of space. And you can see now that this is uh, blown up as a detail, how painterly the application of the paint was for this little fragment of detail, which happens to be a car. And now what I'm gonna do is just move through the various stages uh, more rapidly so you can see the painting evolve uh, uh, more quickly. So we've got the underpainting early, moving along, moving along to finish product. And lastly, what I want to do is 
have you note the finished product versus this image here, which is the actual photograph that the that I took of the cow palace that I based the painting on. And notice how different this photograph is from the finished product. Uh, photorealism is just is not just a matter of copying photographic information. It has to do with knowing how to enhance and exaggerate elements. Most all of the exaggerations that I make are subtle shifts that enhance the sense of illusion, that makes things look more real. Uh, and so there you go. Uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation. And of course, happy painting.